We're breaking down the Michelin technique that the French Laundry, a three Michelin star restaurant uses so we can elevate our lamb at home. Then we're going to cover how the French Laundry serves their lamb and what they look for in quality of ingredients. The French Laundry uses American lamb, which I found to be harder to source and more expensive. So why use it? Based on my research, I found that American lamb tends to be grass fed, grain finished, leading to younger, more tender lamb with less gamey flavor. New Zealand and to an extent Australian lamb tends to be so solely grass fed, which takes longer to raise the lambs, leading to older, less tender lamb with a stronger lamb flavor, but it costs less. Later on, we'll discuss the taste comparison between American versus New Zealand. Also, I have the link for the lamb that the French Laundry uses linked in the description, but just so you know, it's not cheap. To trim the lamb, first remove the flap of meat on top. The best way to do this is to use your fingers to follow the seam of the muscle. Use a boning knife to cut through the fat, being sure to rest the side of the knife on the bones as you cut. Peel back this flat muscle to expose all the silver skin. Insert just the tip of the knife just under the silver skin and slide to the right. Then place your knife back under the silver skin, pulling the silver skin tight. Cut the remaining off. It's best to work a little at a time to prevent cutting away too much meat. My meat instructor at the CIA would always say, red is bread. Flip the rack over so the bones are facing up and run your knife along the bones. Cut across, then cut down along the opposite side of the bones. Flip the rack over so that the bones are pointing to you. And starting with the bones that are closest to each other, run your knife along both sides of the bones. Then use the tip of the knife to release the bones from the meat along with the feather bones next to them. Repeat this process with every other bone to remove four of them. To fringe the bones, tie some butcher twine around the bones, pull the string to remove the meat around the bones. If you have trouble pulling, flip the rack over and that usually does the trick. Cut a one and a half foot piece of butcher twine and tie the string around the bone. Run the string along the back side of the rack, back up the front and tie a knot. Portion the lamb chops as even as possible. They should weigh between four and five ounces. These chops are around three and a half ounces, so they didn't quite make the cut. The ideal rack size would be two pounds or more. Remove all the fat from the trim and one inch dice bolt, keeping them separate. The fat can be rendered by covering with water and cooking on medium low heat until almost all the water is gone. Drain into another pot and cook on medium low heat until all the water is gone. We are saving the bones and meat trim off to the side for the sauce. You can't have an amazing lamb dish without a solid side. For the French Laundry's take on the classic bean ragu cassoulet, you will need cranberry beans and maro beans. Soak the beans separately in one cup of filtered water at room temperature overnight. Soaking the beans will allow them to absorb water, shortening the cook time as well as helping the beans cook evenly. Remove any of the bean shells that float and discard the water. Add both the beans to a separate pot then cover with cold water by two inches and bring to a boil. Remove any beans and shells that float to the top. Floating beans indicate that they are bad. Rinse under cold water to stop the cooking, then add them back to the pots with two ounces of stock and cover with water by one inch. Cut a two inch leek, carrot, and onion wedge. I find it easier to wrap everything in the leek so that you have only one thing to pull out. Bring the beans to a simmer, removing any hard beans and shells that float to the surface. Simmer the beans for an hour or until tender. It is important not to add salt when cooking, add it after they are cooked, and also use filtered water. This not only allows the beans to cook faster, but also evenly. You can cook the beans a day ahead and store them in the cooking liquid. For the fresh beans, shuck the fava beans. Then, using a parry knife in your finger, peel the skin, which will allow them to be greener when cooked, and the germ. For every gallon of water, add one cup of salt. Cook the fava beans, 10 yellow wax beans, and 10 green beans separately until tender. Then shock in the ice bath. Cut the green beans and the wax beans on a bias and set aside. For the tomato diamonds, place an X on the bottom, place them in the water for 10 to 15 seconds just until the skin starts to crack, then shock them. Peel off the skin, then quarter them and remove the seeds. Cut the flesh into long strips, then cut the tomato on a bias to make tomato diamonds. The seeds and trim are good for adding to tomato sauce. For the brunoise, peel a carrot, then use a mandolin to slice the carrots into 1 16th inch ribbons. Julie in the ribbons, then cut them into a brunoise. Do the same procedure to a turnip, or at least I thought it was a turnip. I guess watermelon radish will work. Then julienne and brunoise the dark green parts of a leaf. Use a strainer, blanch each vegetable individually until tender, then 
shock in the ice bath. For the rosemary oil, pick one cup of rosemary leaves, saving some of the small tender leaves along with four of the small bunches for garnish. Pick two cups of Italian parsley, which is about one bunch. The stems can be saved in the freezer for stock. Blanch the rosemary for 30 seconds, then add in the parsley for an extra 10 seconds. Shock the herbs in an ice bath, squeeze out all the water out of the herbs. This is very important. Place half of the herbs into a blender with enough oil to completely puree the herbs. About half a cup, then repeat. For the strongest flavor, store this in the fridge for 24 hours, then strain through a cheesecloth or what I prefer is a linen light, linked in the description. You can store this in the fridge for a couple of days without it turning brown, but store it in the freezer for long-term storage. For the lamb sauce, heat a large pan on high heat, coating the bottom with a neutral oil. I'm also adding in some of the rendered lamb fat. Once the oil starts to smoke, add in the bones and cook for 5 minutes. Then flip once they are GBD, golden brown and delicious. The recipe calls for 1.5 pounds of bones, but instead of buying some, I decided to use the lamb trim. Brown the trim, then deglaze the pan with 1 cup of water. Using a wooden spoon, remove all the brown bits on the bottom of the pan. This is called fond. Once all the water is fully cooked out, Add in a half a cup of chicken stock, preferably homemade. Fully cook this out, which will deepen the color on the bones and trim. For the mirepoix, add 5 ounces of 1.5 inch diced onion, 5 ounces of carrot, and 4 ounces of leek just the white and light green parts to the pan. Cook the vegetables until they are lightly caramelized. Then add half an ounce of thyme, six ounces of chopped tomato, and two crushed garlic cloves. Cook out all the tomato liquid and allow the vegetables to start to caramelize again. Add in 16 ounces of water, 16 ounces of chicken stock, with 16 ounces of veal stock. I replaced the veal stock with chicken jus, which I go over how to make in the demi-glace video, linked in the description. Using a wooden spoon, scrape of any bits of fond, then bring to a simmer. Hold the pot halfway off the burner to create a convection simmer, which will push the fat and impurities off to the side and prevent them from emulsifying back into the stock, which would make it cloudy. Using a spoon and a cup of water, remove all the fat and impurities, dipping the spoon into the water so that you don't reintroduce it back in. Simmer this for 30 to 45 minutes, skimming as the impurities float up, then double strain to remove any particles. You should have around 16 ounces or 2 cups of liquid. Reduce this by half. For the sauce, add half to a small pot, which will be around 4 ounces, and reduce over low heat by half or until it's a glaze, about 2 ounces. Season the chops with salt and pepper and wrap the bone in aluminum foil. This will prevent the bones from burning. Heat a pan, preferably cast iron over medium high heat with a splash of oil to cover the bottom of the pan. Sear the bottom of the chops first, then the front for 3 minutes each. Sear both sides for 2 minutes each. We are looking for GBD all around. The lamb should still be rare. Take the lamb out of the pan and remove all the fat. Add about half a stick of butter, place back in the lamb with some thyme and two crushed garlic cloves and baste. Basting not only adds wonderful flavors from the thyme and garlic, but also helps create even browning. Then place the lamb into a 375 degree oven. PK says his ideal temp is 115 to 125, which he recommends cooking for four minutes. But given that my lamb is smaller, I found that two minutes was ideal. Let them rest three to four minutes in a warm spot. Drain both the beans, then add them to a pan with the remaining lamb sauce. Bring this to a simmer to warm the beans through. Stir in one teaspoon of butter, then add in the fresh beans, tomato diamonds, brunoises, and season it to taste with salt and pepper. Add in the beans to the center of the plate. Place the lamb on top with the bone pointing up. Add the rosemary leaves to garnish reduced lamb sauce. Then drizzle with rosemary oil. The lamb's very delicious. Rosemary and lamb, classic flavor combination. And their take on cassoulet pairs perfectly with the lamb. The New Zealand lamb is just as you expect. Pretty tender, has nice lamb flavor. This American lamb is so good. It's super tender. It has a lot lighter flavor than New Zealand. It's kind of like a cross between beef tenderloin and a rack of lamb. It was almost double the cost of the New Zealand lamb, but for a special occasion, I think it's worth the price. If you enjoyed this video, you should watch this video next to see the French Laundry's techniques for lobster.